You know, it's funny, we end up doing the show and traveling around the city um, in the area and taking a look at a lot of different spaces and kind of capture for me what it's like for neighborhoods to have a certain gathering space and a place where you recognize people and you know you can go and you can get a great cup of coffee and you can have good conversation with people. Well, it's important uh, for folks to have a place where it feels as if they're at home. And uh, we say the Artist Village is where the world meets. And we've been blessed with visitors from across the city, the country, and around the world. It really shows that uh, when a group of folks decide to put their petty differences aside and focus on something that's going to uh, be a benefit to the kids and to the community, you can create a space and a place uh, where people feel comfortable to come and relax, uh, come to volunteer. I remember when we bought it, the front door was laying on the sidewalk. There were bars on the broken windows. The place was just completely out of control. And uh, we came in and started, you know, the effort. The space is really, it's beautiful. And I mean, the wood floors here have a story as they well. Do. They do. They actually came out of some crack houses that we dismantled uh, with our volunteer corps just a block over. Uh, we actually hand wrecked 12 abandoned homes with uh, people power and sledgehammers mm -hmm. and put in a farm. It's called Farm City Detroit and everything we grow there we give away. But the floors came out of a, a couple of the crack houses, not only here in the coffee shop but upstairs in the lofts that we're building. So mm -hmm. as we were destroying, we're rebuilding and recycling Detroit. And there's been some development news around yes, this area yes, as yes. well. How do you think that's going to change things? Well, I think it'll change it for the better. Um, uh, as you know, this is our 31st year of this doing this work. Uh, we have raised and spent about $20 million, but about four years ago, we were able to help convince uh, Myers to build just around the corner, and that brought a $33 million investment to the community. In June, uh, the state and the city will be sent, spending $12 million redoing Grand River from Rosedale through Old Redford. That's big. And then uh, it is. And then Peter Cummings, my good friend uh, Peter, bought the block across with the, the street with the platform. With the platform. And in July, they'll be investing $4.5 million. So if you add all this up, we've brought over $70 million of investment into this community because we refuse to give up on Detroit. Well, there's just so much uh, potential yeah. and opportunity. And, you know, we could have given up and left like a lot of folks did. You know, I'm half Italian and half Lebanese and 100% Detroit stubborn. When I get something here and here, it's like I'm on cruise there control. I can't even help myself. 31 years. Um, were there times that you said, gosh, I can't believe the city is in this direction? Or how would you characterize where the city stands now and especially your, your pocket of it? Well, sure. Well, you know, we were the city that put the world on wheels. You know, we were the arsenal of democracy in 45. We taught the world to dance with Motown. And I say that to say this, there's so much love uh, for this city, not here, not just locally, but around the world. And uh, we're seeing people come back in, in waves to help us uh, this dream that we had to be able to rebuild our community. Um, you know, in the 50s, we had almost 2 million people living here. We're, we're down to less than 700,000. So I think we've kind of bottomed out and uh, when you bottom out, you get a bounce. And, mm -hmm. and, and we're, we're counting on that bounce to bring us back. I don't know if we'll ever be at 1.8 or 1.9 million, but um, I, I, you know, property values are, are going up. Investment is coming in. Matter of fact, the mayor was here in December with seven corporations uh, donating $5 million. And uh, Flagstar Bank has adopted this neighborhood. And $5 million of that uh, fund will come right here to Grand River in last year. So we're thankful uh, that the mayor's pushing the, the development into the neighborhoods. We love downtown. Um, you know, a city that has a decent, clean uh, downtown really benefits the whole region. But we also know the neighborhoods are just as important. And we're starting to see that investment here where it needs to be. Any kind of tension or, I guess, deliberate conversation investors are having with people in the neighborhood to make sure it's not like, here come all these investors. We're going to do all these amazing things to your neighborhood to make it sure. better. Is there any kind of conflict on what investment wants, what the neighborhood wants, and making sure that it's authentic investment. Well, that's a great point. Um, when we met with Meyer, um, we had great uh, discussions and meetings with the community. Matter of fact, Alicia and her team uh, helped 300 people from this neighborhood get jobs at Meyer. Um, we also helped uh, to negotiate the deal with Meyer in the city to bring the 8th Precinct back. So there's been really great dialogue between the developers, the city, and nonprofit groups like Lightbusters and the Block Clubs. Um, Mr. Cummings has had a series of meetings here uh, and around this neighborhood uh, to talk to the neighbors about what they would like to see mm -hmm. across the street and down the corner. So um, we can develop this community uh, by including them uh, in the development, in the opportunities, uh, in the jobs. 
Do you ever take a day off, John? No. If I'm, if I'm awake, I'm working on rebuilding <laughs> Detroit. I can promise you that. Okay, um, next project's for you. Well, uh, this uh, month, thanks to Flagstar Bank and a few others, we'll be completing the construction here at Artist Village. Just a block over uh, at Farm City, uh, we're going to be building a kids camp. It's gonna be a place where kids can come to learn about healthy eating and farming. And then of course, Mayor Duggan has asked us to help him board up 9,000 abandoned houses. We meet here every Saturday at 9 a.m. and we go out into the neighborhood and do that work. I don't know if we're gonna get all 9,000 of them, but we're gonna do our level best to continue our effort uh, to clean up the community and secure those properties for further development.